Hello and welcome back to the Schmuseum. Today we are going to be receiving here at the Schmuseum a very special new car, aren't we Brad? Um, I don't know, you haven't told me about it. Well, we're going to be receiving today a brand new Lotus Emira with the inbound Schmimobile Emira, a first edition in Hethel Yellow. When Lotus reached out and said, hey, can we send you guys a car which is under embargo in terms of driving impressions for the time being? So we can't yet go and drive it. That will all be coming very soon. But what we can do is pull it in here to the garage to have it alongside the other cars and basically check it out in detail. And I'm quite excited about this because while it's great fun driving in the ridiculously overpowered supercar stuff, I'm a big fan of driver's cars. And you know, Brad, you drive an Arbath 124. This is like... Small, lightweight, manual gearbox. Like for me, I, it's just something about it. It's everything. And obviously the Elise is missing right now, by the way, for anybody wondering. The Firefly, as it's become nicknamed, is actually out having some running in mileage done. That will be back. You know the nice thing about that? These things actually look really bright again. I've, the Focus Orange, I've not seen it that bright in a while. <laughs> Until later on today when, yeah, we'll get to that. But you know, cars like the GT8, okay, it's not light, it's not Lotus light, um, but it is carbon bodied. It's lighter than the standard Vantage. Things like even the Heritage RS manual, that kind of amount of power, the Amira 400 horsepower with the V6. So the car's gonna be arriving here later. We're gonna check it out in full, go kind of around it, just learn a little bit about it, have it here in the garage, get the Elise back and have the Amira and the Elise together, which is kind of the bookends of Lotus really. The Elise being the last of the old and the Amira being the first of the new. And I'm sure because it's the day here at the Museum, plenty more is gonna come up along the way. A quick update before we get that far though, another small arrival here at the Schmuseum. I'm not actually sure off the top of my head what the weight of the electric Mini is. I'm sure it's not that light. But anyway, we've now done, I want to say about 300 miles on it. You had a run back I, out with it. Yeah, I had a run home. It's a good little car. I think for, for me, I mean, there's a lot of motorway, which yeah. it's not the greatest motorway car, but I feel like for heading in and out of town or through like yes. cities, etc. Perfect. I completely agree with that. Minis have always had this very go-kart-esque, super fast rack steering, which means that when you build up to any speed, it kind of jumps all over the place. For commuting around town, wonderful. Electric, silent, congestion charge, etc. All of that side of it. Um, higher speed's not the biggest fan. And I also took it out of London for a run and very promptly found myself back here with only 16 miles of range to empty when I plugged it back in because on a full charge, even with gentle driving, it's about 100 miles, 150, 160 kilometers. It's not a whole lot, but we're going to do a lot of more miles with it over the coming months and find out a lot more about it. Um, the Mini Cooper S Electric Shadow Edition, which is what this is, with all of these like vinyls. And to be honest, this is just a vinyl on the side, a sticker. I kind of feel like that should be something a little bit more than that. I mean, the badges are nice, but... Maybe even just the badges on their own. But I think it's all personal taste. Maybe that's how, if yeah. we had the design of what we would put on these parts of the car, how we would do it. I quite like the one on the bonnet. It's like subtle, but yeah. Yeah, I'm not normally the biggest fan of black cars. I do like how this slides completely under the radar, but the two Lotuses coming back, Lotuses, low tie? Low tie, it's got to be low tie, right? The two of them coming here today are both very bright colors. And given we have an absence of a yellow car, because the GT Black series hasn't been here for about six months now, it's going to be quite fun to have that in a little bit later. So I guess it's a countdown until it arrives. We have a flash of yellow, Hethel yellow, one of the six colors that you could choose from new for the Lotus Emira. They will be adding more colors down the line. This also has the contrast black pack, exactly as mine does. I think probably the same wheels as I have. I can't remember right off the top of my head with the black calipers. This one's left hand drive though. I'm looking forward to getting it unloaded, started into the Schmuseum, and then we can take a better look at it. In we come. So, gonna park this right in the middle. Right, fingers crossed we're not talking over each other. Lotus and Mira inside this museum. It's actually good. So this is the first time I've seen the Lotus and Mira in person, and it's actually really nice. First time you've ever seen one? I, I think ever seen it. I've been trying to like rack my memory just to see is there another time I've seen it, but I think this genuinely is the first time I've seen one in person, and I really like it. Of course, the first time I've seen a yellow one, um, this is the first edition, V6 manual. There are a few different configurations. You've got the three and a half litre V6 with either the auto box or the manual as we have in here. And then the shortly following derivative is the two litre turbo four cylinder from AMG with the dual clutch. So two quite different setups. I mean, three different setups if you look at all of the gearboxes between them. Um, 
limited in terms of options, but actually quite a simple order form because you only have a few different things that you can actually choose and select anyway. And I have just checked, mine is gonna have the silver wheels, not the dual tone wheels. I wanted to go with the silver on the yellow with the silver interior as well. But there's a lot to kind of go through in detail with it. The Amira just has all of this cool styling. I mean, you've seen the Avaya before, the electric uh, hypercar. Yes, I have, I have. This is the same kind of shapes and style but and that, obviously, I guess that's all part of the new sort of era of, of Lotus cars. Yes. And even the Electra, even the SUV manages to take some of those design kind of cues into it as well. So we'll just take a moment, have a look over it, and then we'll get through this in, in some detail. With the car here then, there are a few things I haven't previously seen about the Amira, and this is quite fun to explore together. And the first of those is the new style key. So until this point, all Lotus models have had your traditional and typical turn key, as opposed to the new keyless system. On here, obviously you've got the chrome elements, you've got the Lotus graphic in the very center. On the rear, you have your expected buttons, lock, unlock, and the buttons open the rear hatch. And on the side of it, it says for the drivers the Lotus marketing motto. So that's quite a nice thing. I suppose it'd be the same key for all of the upcoming models. Now talking rear hatch, in fact, have a look at this. All of the previous cars that I've seen have had this covered and not looking beautiful, but you have a lovely view through that rear window in the hatch to that engine, the Toyota sourced three and a half litre supercharged V6, making 400 horsepower. And in fact, if we hold the button and open up the rear hatch, have a little look at that as well. Now, 400 horsepower, I often talk about, is an absolute sweet spot for a sports car to drive on the road. 400, 450 horsepower. It's enough that you can make some good progress. It's not too much that you feel guilty if you're revving it out, bearing in mind speed limits, etc. and especially with a manual gearbox. And it looks really nice, to be honest. Obviously finished with a couple of surrounding pieces to hide away all the gubbins around. And you also, like on the Elise, have your storage area back here too. Now, not quite as much as the Elise, I think. There's a bit more padding around. It'd be interesting to compare later on. And I suppose, not that we know yet because driving impressions are under embargo, I presume that's gonna get warm and this might get warm as well. But that's one to find out in due course. It says maximum allowable mass in luggage compartment, 50 kilos. You'd probably struggle to 50, fit 50 kilos in there unless you're putting something very heavy in. Close that down. The design back here, I think, is cool with the contrast of the gloss black against the Hethel yellow. And I actually like the Hethel yellow more than I thought. It is a flat color. It is very quickly attracting every single bug it possibly can. Yellow cars do tend to do that. They all seem to be coming running for it. You've got the first edition plaque worn just up here. Um, but I think the, the thing with this, and Brad, I'm sure you agree looking at it for the first time, is you look at this and it feels like it's punching at supercar level. It, it looks does, like it, a supercar. It does. It just looks like a very small supercar. Yes, it's tiny. The footprint is tiny. It feels so short. I mean, design-wise, the, the actual shape and curves, if I can say this, aren't too dissimilar from the SF90. <laughs> like, like if you take it on a very basic level, but it's much, much shorter. It's almost like a slightly miniaturized version of, you know, the Avaya level car. If you come and have a look in through this side, well, I guess have a proper look inside just for a moment. Check out the uh, gear shifter. See the linkage underneath. That's really quite nice. I was wondering how exactly that would be on the prototype cars that didn't have the finished version of this. You have the flap here over the start stop button. Very Lamborghini esque. Very Lamborghini esque. I think you can press it between or you can come round however you want to do it. Obviously, the shifter, and it's the same actually as the Elise. They kept that traditional kind of ball knob at the top little slot here i suppose for your phone your driving mode selectors there's going to be a lot to have a little play with and go through with this um the car has a number of different configurations actually i can tire a steering wheel mine's gonna have a gray interior so it'll look a little bit different there's actually decent space behind the seats um obviously the avora was a kind of two plus two so it had some seats back there kind of squeezed in in this you could get some decent luggage in here I'm actually more impressed with it than I thought I would be in terms of the, the space seeing this particular model. Now, another thing you can't see is to do with the suspension and the ride, because you can order the car with two different configurations, the Tour chassis or the Sport setup. I've gone for the Sport. 
You can then have within the sport setup two different types of tires. You can either have what we have here, the Goodyears, or you can have it on Sport Cup 2s. And I've gone for Sport Cup 2s because I absolutely love Sport Cup 2s on every single car. But I'm really liking this configuration. I'm feeling very happy at the moment with what I've chosen to go for. It's a very different yellow to the other yellows in the garage, which will only be the GT Black Series, which is a triple layer pearlescent yellow. And I suppose it's gonna look quite crazy alongside the Elise later on. So yeah, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time playing around, pressing buttons, poking around it, seeing what's what, and seeing what else we can find out. We're basically exploring in here. Ooh, owner's handbook. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mark, have a look at the owner's handbook. Yeah, I'm gonna read every single page Please here do. to another car. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Not Thank yet. You. Foam handbook. I tell you what, though, it's nice that it comes with a lovely little leather pouch that's stitched to match the car. Yeah. All the details. Is it stitched to match the car, or does it just happen to be yellow and we have a yellow car? It probably just happens to be yellow. <laughs> but sitting inside here, the first thing I'm going to say is with two people inside, there's a whole lot more space than in the Elise. It, it doesn't feel anything like the Elise, does it? It's Really. I mean, I have headroom, I have, it's lovely. And it's quite easy to climb in and out. This tub is low enough to be easy enough. We've got the um, electric seats. It's actually, it's, it's amazing for me to think that this car is the price point it is. Another cubby hole. Again, something you would never expect in a Lotus. There's like storage USB ports. USB ports, storage, cup holders, big door pockets. We've got everything that we could need in here. Memory seats. Memory seats. I like how there's just four of us around this car. We've basically come over and just gone, ooh, Amira, let's look at it. We're all kind of oogling and learning and just taking it in a little bit and starting it up because why not? And this is where we can't drive yet, but we have the drive mode selector and can go into sport. And that opens the valves. That sounds a lot better. That's yes. quite a deep rumble. That sounds pretty cool. Not bad. Indeed. There's a really nice That's induction noise. This, this sound is amazing. That sound when driving, I mean, obviously prior to this point, Tom and Mark have already heard it because they've been out in the car. Yes. Um, I've not been out in one other than my run up the hill at Goodwood when I was wearing a helmet and so much was happening at once. But that sound that you get is going to be really cool on the road. Yeah, and again, I find myself saying the same thing, but modern cars don't sound like that anymore. But this one somehow does. It's like induction it's a proper and noise. It's supercharger. Cool. Yeah, you've, you've literally got the V6 exhaust, the induction, the supercharger wine. You've got everything in one. Yeah, just like with the Elise. And that shift. This is going to be nice. I'm doing it the wrong way around because right hand drive. <laughs> but I'm just getting a feel for what it would be like when I'm actually on the right hand side of the car. See, that would actually be more one for me to take over <laughs> right now. I could change gear right now, but uh, it does feel lovely. Oh. It like has a really high pitched like whistle to it at the top. That's cool. As you get higher up the RPM. I think that's a supercharger wine just yeah. coming into play. But um, yeah. This is going to be a cool thing to drive. Does this make oh, you more well. excited for yours? I am really quite excited for it right now. I didn't how, expect to be so excited, but how plush this is! This is what you. This is what's the most shocking thing for me because Lotuses. Let's be fair. It's always been. They've always been quite bare, quite sparse, but for a purpose, right? Yeah. But this is. It's lovely, this soft materials, leather, Alcantara everywhere. It's it's just very unlotus. It's very unlotus. This is unlotus. Electra is very, 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 very unlotus. But this is new lotus, right? It's a new era, it's a new type of thing. Do you know what I need to do? I've actually already got the plates for mine. Are you gonna put your plates? We're gonna go on and put this. my plates on this. <laughs> Why not? Let's do it. I'm on it. Mission success. SH13 MEE. Now for anybody wondering why 13. The code name for Amira is type 131. Tedious, I know, but 13 seemed appropriate. So this is what's gonna go on mine. And given it's gonna be this color, that is what it's gonna look like. I mean, it looks good from here. I like it. And obviously you probably saw, quote from Colin Chapman, simplify, then add lightness. One of the most famous quotes from Colin Chapman, the car's always being about being super lightweight. And Yes, this might be heavier than the outgoing models, but obviously compared to most cars nowadays, it's still very, 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 very light, which is obviously always gonna help. Power to weight, etc. more dynamically balanced, better for the setup, better for everything, really. Lightness is what you want when you want performance. So looking forward to having that on it. We're gonna do a little bit of a swap around and take the GT out, which means Mark needs to move the Amira. 
It's my first time I'm going to move in a mirror. Come on, Mark, out the way. <laughs> I'm going to get the battery charger unplugged from here. It's all happening at once. There we go. And let's start it again. It's always a fun game trying to guess which way the, like, the catches have to go on these. Tell us what it drives like from there to there, but <laughs> it's now there. So GT is going out. Get this rinse down. It's still got a few bugs and things on it from when I took it out the other day. So we'll get it tidied and put away properly, and then uh, yeah, it's a good day for it. Car washing at this museum. Slow fun time for the Ford GT. Time to get this looking nice and shiny again. We've obviously got our Topaz um, snow foam, that's it. I forgot the word. Topaz snow foam in the Canon. A white Ford GT? Do we approve white Ford GTs or? Do Sorry, we what? Do we approve white Ford GT? Or do we stick with red and gold? I think we'll stick with the red and gold. I actually really like this combination. I know it's controversial online, but it's so much nicer in person, so. I'll stick with this. You have to see it. This is how you get to Ford GT in in race mode through a shutter that is pretty much on the lowest point it can go for this car. Oh, even I've got a duck hunter. That is kind of fun. Seeing exactly what height <laughs> the Ford GT can get through on the shutter. Yes, it's in race mode. There we go, back up out of race mode. But cool to see that such a small gap in the shutter can fit it's this car so through. Low. And the weird thing we were saying, we were sort of crouching near that gap and saying that oh, it, it you're basically you're, sitting. If you do this, your head's over the car. Yeah, you're pretty much at the same height as the car. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. And it is back. Precision again, getting it under the shutter. A little bit of sunlight with the car. And now we're back inside. It needs a wash. It's done some good mileage. Loads of bugs on the side, lots of dirt down by the nose step, etc. But cool having this back and instantly, oh, instantly the cars don't look as bright anymore. The interesting one actually is going to be if I just run around here. That'll do for now. Oh wow. The colour of the Lotus is, well, the Lotus, there's two low, low tie. The colour of the Amira has instantly changed. Looking at this today so far, like this has been a nice bright yellow. So I think it's time that we get that one, pop it right here, and have the two of them sat next to each other. Yeah, let's do it. See that thing become really faded. Yes, and can I just say it's really cool knowing that this has now had some miles done by a racing driver of the caliber that it has. We'll just leave it there. Firefly is back. Now, I'm not sure exactly what Tom has just told you guys, but that car is now very nearly run in. In fact, it's so nearly run in that if you drive from here to the home of Lotus in Hethel, it will be completely run in on 1,000 miles. And that is the next plan. The owner is actually going to be doing that journey. Up to this point, I've done roughly half of the running in mileage. And as you might now have gathered, the other half of the running in mileage, or you know, just under half each, has now been done by, well, a legend, I think it's safe to say. Somebody has stood on the top step of the podium at one of the world's most famous races and holds plenty of records to his name, a very lovely guy and it's amazing to have had this opportunity to share that. So the car is now on about 850 miles, which is really pretty special. It is a little bit dirtier than it was. It's gonna need a clean up. The weather today, or at least this morning, was not exactly fantastic. But obviously the fun thing right now, as you can see, is that we have a Lotus from the last of the old generation, quite literally the final Lotus of the last generation, and a Lotus of the new generation side by side here at the Museum. And although the Amira is a tiny car, when you've got the Elise alongside it, it suddenly looks significantly larger. It's actually quite fascinating to, to see that. But also check out the design of these cars. Check out the shapes that you have at the front, the front grille, the intakes for the side for the cooling. They're basically the same shapes. They've stayed true to the brand identity, even though they've now got the new style up on the bonnet as well from the Avaya. But obviously this lower section of the front bumper is 
literally the same design. And I like that with a manufacturer. You don't really think about it, but subconsciously you take in that it's a car from the same company. Now, earlier we thought that was really bright. We thought Hethel Yellow was a very strong, very in your face yellow paintwork until that's back. And all of a sudden, if you stare at that for about 30 seconds and you look back at this, it just looks kind of murky and dark and not what it was. So yeah, quite fun to have these bookends of Lotus, quite literally, a prototype test car of the new era and the last production road car of the old era here at the Schmuseum. That is really very special if you ask me. And it's all thanks, of course, to Lotus for kindly popping the Amira over as the owner of this, who's allowed us all to share it and to experience it and to share it with you guys, which I think is oh so cool. So when this has then been to Hethel and it's been fully run in, the mileage is all there, 1000 miles, it will be ready to be driven in anger. And I can, well, cannot wait until that's possible. Unfortunately, I'm about to be heading away for a while. There's a certain rally over in North America, which means I'm not gonna be able to do it. But when I get back, I certainly will. Back out into the sunshine. Look at the precision. Oh, it's so satisfying. This is now coming out for a wash. Get rid of some of this. Hello. That's really nerve wracking. I oh, know, sorry. So, quick question. Yeah. We could arguably do with a couple more miles. Do you wanna go for a ride? Nah. Okay, see you later. Are you going for a ride? Yeah. Oh, well, you enjoy your ride. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do something. Oh yeah, bird pearl my car, that's what I need to sort out. So. I will see you guys in a few minutes when I'm back and this is being washed. Bye. Fast forward a bit. Tom is back. How was your drive? Amazing, as always. I love this little thing. As I said previously, I can't believe I've never driven one before and well, I can't stop driving this one now. But I have to stop because, well, as you can see, our racing driver has made a little bit of a mess out with today's weather. So I think we need to get that one cleaned up, ready. No step. No step. No clean. <laughs> well, not clean. <laughs> not clean, yes. I love the way they put that there as though it isn't obvious. Yeah, you know, when you think you your step side, step, uh, side step, side step, side sill skirt is a step, yes. But what it shows is someone out there thought it was so. Anyway, moving on, let's go and get some cleaning stuff. Round two. More snow foam. Is that, does it dull down the colour? I feel like you can probably still see the orange through the snow foam. You definitely can. You can still see the orange coming through the snow foam. I don't think you'll ever hide this colour. No, you won't. But this is proof. Anyway, I'm going to let Tom crack on with this. I need to head inside because the Amira is about to head out. Mark is taking it for the evening. So need to go in and I guess finish off today's video. Um, outro, etc. This will be cleaned up. I'm going to insert a photo now of when it's parked up and cleaned back inside. All is well with this. Anyway, I'm gonna head back in and we will go and say farewell to the Lotus Amira sitting pretty in the middle. I think, Brad, that's pretty much us for the day. I think it's time to wrap up, pack up, and <laughs> I guess for Mark to go and enjoy a spin out in this, which you'll be doing soon as well. Definitely, I can't wait to get behind the wheel. Uh, obviously to go for a first ever drive in the Lotus Amira, the first drive of a future Schmimobile, the first drive of this very bright yellow machine, which has arrived here at the Schmuseum today. And it was a bit of fun popping the plates on earlier. We actually took a few photos with my plates kind of stuck over to give us a vision of what things are going to be in the future with this in the garage. But there are a lot of details to it, a lot of things we've been looking at, a lot of things that we can't talk about yet. And of course, I can't wait, as I said, to get behind the wheel and take it for a drive before mine should arrive, I guess, in July, August, something like that. We shall see exactly. Um, but I think it's gonna be a great car to drive and hopefully we can get you out in it at some point, Brad. I have to see how that goes. Insurance, age, all of this stuff is complicated. We've talked a little bit about it. Anyway, for today, that is it. A very Lotus themed video, but that's it for today at the Schmuseum. Until next time.